Hang on. All right, so these problems here, if we wanted to simplify, 5 raised to the 1 half times 5 raised to the 1 half. Well, all we'd have to do is add our exponents on there. So that's 1 half plus 1 half, which is just 1. So simplified form of this would just be 5. And what we're going to get into today, whenever you hear me say simplify or you read simplify, it's in simplest form. Like I said, we're going to work with numbers. So fractions, I'll use the example 6 eighths simplifies to 3 fourths. Get it into simplest form. Okay. 2.5. All right. 2.5 is really 5 halves. So x raised to the 5 halves. And so this would be square root. We don't have to write the 2 in the index. x to the 5th. All right, on this one, 4x to the 7th, again, that 7th power is only on the x. So you could think of this as square root of 4 times square root of x to the 7th. Our product property, it's 4 times x, so we can break it up into two radicals. And so this is really 2 when we do square root of 4. This would be x. My denominator is my index, which was 2. So it would be 2 x to the 7 halves. So that would be final simplest form. Okay. All right. So let's get into today's stuff. So simplest form for radicals and rational exponents. All right. We don't want to have any zero exponents. So if you end up with x to the zero power, you're going to write that as 1. Okay? If you end up with 100 to the zero power, you're actually going to write it as 1. Okay? So anything raised to the zero power, you are simplifying. You're going to write that as just 1, and it's multiplication. You don't even have to write it down. Okay? So if you see something raised to the zero power, in, it, in its multiplication, really it's eliminating itself from being written in the problem anymore. Okay? Exponents always as fractions. Do not have any final answers with your exponent as a decimal. All right? And what they'll do on these, they'll give you a problem starting out with the exponent as a decimal. So as soon as you see that, change it over to a fraction. No negative exponents. So again, if we had something, say, x to the negative second, simplest form, we would move that down to the denominator, and it would be 1 over x squared. If we already had something that would say 1 over x to the negative third in the denominator, well, we can bring that up, and it becomes x to the positive third. So if you ever have a negative exponent, it could be numerator or denominator. Just flip it to the other side, and it becomes positive. So final answer, no negative exponents. Combine all factors. And so, like, if we had 2 root 2 and plus 5 root 2, well, we know that's 7 root 2. Do all of your combining that you can. Like I said, fractions in simplest form. I don't say reduce. You probably have heard reduce before. I don't say reduce because 6 eighths and 3 fourths are the same number. They're both 0.75. So 3 fourths is not any smaller than 6 eighths. So I don't ever say reduce. I say simplify. Okay, because that's all you're doing. So 6 eighths in simplest form is 3 fourths. And then all perfect roots are removed. So if we had square root of 16x, well, that's really the same as 4 square root of x. So make sure you are bringing out perfect roots, perfect cubes, perfect square roots, or perfect squares, perfect cubes. Make sure you're bringing those out when possible. All right, so... 
this isn't really anything new. It's just now one condensed. All right, all this stuff, you know this, make it happen. So let's take a look at if we're just going to simplify a numerical answer. So we did a bunch of work within the problem, and we end up with negative 32 raised to the 3 fifths. And I want that to be in simplest form. So, okay, well, what is negative 32 raised to the 3 fifths? Well, I know that's the same as the fifth root of negative 32 all raised to the third power. So we talked about this yesterday. When we have that numerator of 3, we could write it as negative 32 cubed all under the radical, or we could take it on the outside. I like to take it on the outside because then I can see, okay, I'm going to do all my work inside and then raise it to the third power because oftentimes that will give me a smaller number. Negative 32 raised to the third power, I mean, I could work through and figure that out. Or I could think of, okay, the fifth root of negative 32 is just negative 2. Negative 2 raised to the third power, that's easier for me to do in my head with mental math. I know that's negative 8. Rather than thinking, okay, the fifth root of negative 32 cubed, I can work through using my properties and the mental math becomes easier. 25 to the negative 3 halves. So this one has that negative in the exponent. So I'm going to bring this all down. So 1 over 25 to the negative 3 halves. A common mistake I've seen, all right, I'm going to say don't do this. If it was, say, um, say it was 25x to the negative 3 halves, okay, do not write that as 1 over 25x to the positive 3 halves. That is not the same. This negative 3 halves is only being applied to this x. Okay, so what this should look like, the correct way, would be 25 all over x to the positive 3 halves. All right, so again, where that exponent is being applied is important. Now, I'm, uh, I don't want to confuse you, but if this was parentheses around the 25x, there was parentheses, and then all of it was raised to the negative 3 halves, Yes, it would all come down. But treat these as two separate things. 25 and then x is raised to the negative 3 halves. So all I'm going to bring down is that x. So it would be x to the positive 3 halves in the denominator. 25 would stay above. Okay, so getting back to ours. Oh, this shouldn't be a negative down there. This should be 25 raised to the positive 3 halves back in our problem. All right, so I know this is 1 over the square root of 25, and I'm going to put my cube on the outside of a set of parentheses. Because taking the square root of 25 cubed, that's, that's a bigger number. That's more mental math that I'd have to do. But if I think of this, well, the square root of 25, I know that. And so now I just have 1 over 5 cubed. 5 cubed is easier for me to do. 5 cubed, I know, is 125, and I'm done. Okay, and again, 5 cubed. 5 times 5 is 25, times 5 again is 125. All right, 4 raised to the 3.5. So we get some of these decimals that we're like, okay, I don't, I don't really know what 3.5 is as a fraction. Okay, so... You could almost think about 3.5, all right, I know that is a fraction, and it's 3.5. So if I took 3.5 and multiplied it by, well, I'll write it as a fraction. I'll say 3.5 over 1. If I were to multiply the top by 2 and the bottom by 2, it's an equivalent fraction of 7.2, or I'm sorry, 7 divided by 2. Okay, like a 0.5 is easy. Just multiply that 0.5. It could be 10.5. Okay, 
Okay, I know 10.5 is a fraction. If I divide that or multiply that by 2, it's going to give me 21. So 21 over 2 is the same as 10.5. So multiplying by 2 whenever you have a 0 0.5 is really easy. So really now, this is 4 raised to the 7 halves. And so it's going to be the square root of 4. And again, I'm going to write this like that. So rather than thinking 4 to the 7th power and then square rooting that number, I'm going to square root the 4 to end up with just 2 raised to the 7th power. But still, mental math, we can do this. So 2 to the 7th power, 2 times 2 is 4, times 2 is 8, times 2 is 16, times 2 is 32, times 2 is 64, times 2 is 128. And if you need to list these all out, literally write out 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. One more. List out 7 twos and do that in your right here on your scrap paper. Okay, 2 times 2 is 4. Times 2 is 8. Times 2 is 16. Times 2 is 32. 64, 128. I can get all, all of those going. Okay? Rather than thinking 4 times 4 times 4 times 4 seven times and then square rooting, do the square root first, get a smaller number, and then it's easier to work with. All right, and then this one would be the fifth root of negative 32. And again, I'm going to bring this 4 all the way out. So I'm trying to keep my radicand small because it's easier for me to take the fifth root of negative 32. Well, the fifth root of negative 32, I know, is negative 2. So now I just have negative 2 raised to the fourth power. Negative 2 raised to the fourth power would be negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2. So I have 4. I have a positive 4, a negative 8, but then times negative 2 gives me a positive 16. Okay, I'm going to show another way we can look at this one too. The same one. Okay, so I could think of this. You know, no, let's just stay right here with this one. All right. Don't do that. Don't do that. Next slide. There we go. Now let's look at some simplification with variables. We had x raised to the negative 3 sevenths, and then going to raise that to the seventh power. Oh, sorry about that. Let's get back to where we're at. All right, there we go. So I think of the 7 as a rational exponent. I'll just write it as 7 over 1. Whenever we cross a parenthesis, we have to multiply. And so this would be 3 times 7 to be 21, 7 times 1, which is just 7. But we have that negative still going on there, so don't forget about that negative. 27 divide, or sorry, 21 divided by 7 would be a negative 3. So final answer without any negatives would be 1 over x cubed. Number 2. All right, this 1 third power is being applied to the 8, but it's also being applied to this y to the 15th. So really, I have negative 8 raised to the 1 third times y to the 15 times 1 third, so 15 thirds. Negative 8 to the 1 third, that's the same thing as taking the cube root of negative 8, which is negative 2. 
y to the 15 over 3, that would be y to the 5th. Number 3, still distributing that exponent to both terms because it's multiplication. If it was x squared plus y, then it'd be like a FOIL distributive process. But because it's multiplication, we can distribute each one right in there. So now my new numerator, x raised to the fourth power, four times one half, be four over two, which is just two. And then y to the one half power. Denominator x, two times one fourth, so that would be two over four, so that's one half. 8 times 1 fourth, 8 over 4 would be y squared. Now to simplify, x squared all over x to the 1 half. What do I do with those exponents? So I add, subtract, multiply, or divide those exponents. Subtract. Okay? So this is really x2 minus 1 half. What's 2 minus 1 half as a fraction? We could take that 2 and make it 2 over, well, so if we have a common denominator of 2, so this would actually be 4 over 2. And so this becomes 3 halves. So now I have x raised to the 3 halves. I don't have any denominator for the x. For the y, I'll have 1 half subtract 2. Well, we want that common denominator, so I'm going to write that, oh, yeah, 4 halves. And so this becomes y to the negative 3 halves. That negative means I can put in the denominator as a positive. So y to the positive 3 halves. x raised to the negative 2 thirds to the 15th power. Okay, so I'm going to have x raised to the negative 30 over 3, and then y to the negative 15 over 3. So this would be x negative 30 over 3 would be a negative 10, y would be a negative 5. Both have negatives, so I can switch. This will be y to the positive 5th in the numerator, x to the positive 10th in the denominator. All right, four more practice problems. I'll be off and rolling. Okay, I want to ingrain in it. Like you just got to see more and more of these, and you get better and better. Okay, so this is eight to the two thirds, and we want to simplify. Remember, so eight to the two thirds is not enough. This is really the cube root of eight, and I'm going to write squared on the outside because the cube root of eight I know is just two, two squared is 4. So we're trying to get it, I'm trying to work with the smallest numbers possible because we're doing this with mental math. Again, these, these are the types of problems you're going to see on the test that I'm not going to allow you to use a calculator. You need to be able to work with this. Okay? If you got some big number and you're like, I don't know what the, the cube root of 700 and whatever is, okay, look back. Maybe you could have done the exponent on the outside and it was a cube root of a smaller number and then raise it to a new power. Okay, multiplication. So this is 3x. So this is really 3 times x to the 1 half times 4 times x to the 2 thirds. Sometimes it's nice just to see it all laid out. Okay, don't get distracted by those parentheses. All it's saying is all of those are being multiplied. Well, my commutative property with multiplication allows me to do it in any order. So I could say, well, that's the same as 3 times 4 times x to the 1 half 
times x to the two-thirds. All right, that's still equivalent. That's going to give me my answer. Oh, 3 times 4, I know I can do that. That's just 12. x raised to the 1 half times x to the 2 thirds, I need to find my common denominator. So if I do a common denominator of 6, I had to multiply by 3. So this is 3 6 plus 4 6. And so I have x to the 7 6. I'm going to tackle all of my numbers as coefficients and then tackle my exponents on the variables. And with multiplication, these all combine together nicely. If it was addition, which we practiced the last concept, you're not going to combine exponents with addition or anything. x raised to the one half is x to the one half. You can't combine 2x to the one half plus, or 3x to the one half plus 4x to the two thirds. It's like saying, three apples plus four oranges. They're not the same. All right, with a negative exponent, so I could say, well, that's the same thing as, and I'll just write as a radical right away, one over square root of 81. So really this was one over 81 to the positive one half. One half I could write as a square root. And so this is just one ninth. And then again, with these fractional ones, they look big, they look messy. Just take it piece by piece. All right, I know this 2 is going to apply to each term, but then this 2 is applying to each term in the denominator as well. So everybody wants that exponent of 2. So I'm going to have x to the negative 2 thirds, y squared, x to the 4 thirds, and y to the negative 2 over 2, which is just y to the negative first, and it is important to write that as negative 1. We usually don't write 1 as an exponent, but in this case, because it's a negative 1, that is important. All right, we can't forget about that. So then I'll tackle each one, and I know I'll subtract those exponents. So this is x to the negative 2 thirds, and you don't have to change you don't have to change signs here in this step. I don't care if you work with negative exponents in your in-between steps. Final answer, though, that's when you're going to start moving them up and down. So you can leave them negative with your work. So this is x to the negative 2 thirds plus 4 thirds. Negative 2 plus 4 is a positive 2. Denominator stays, so it's x to the 2 thirds. Because it's positive, I know it will be in the numerator. Denominator, I have y squared plus a negative 1, so I'm just going to write it as y squared minus 1. So this is then just y to the first. That first is kind of irrelevant. It's positive, so I can just write it as y all in the numerator. Okay? I don't have anything left that's not going to work. I made a mistake. Where did I make a mistake at? Alan, you gave a, a slight nod. Avery, where did I mess up? Okay. So, nope, well, it's subtraction. So it would be 2 minus, yeah, so we, we can write it as 2 plus 1. Made another mistake too. This right here, negative two thirds, should have been subtraction. So this should have been negative two thirds minus four thirds. Okay? So that was my mistake there. So this would be a negative six thirds. And so x would be a negative two, which is the same as one over x squared, meaning x squared is going in the denominator. All right, I did mess up there. And then right here, it was to subtract negative 1. So I really messed this one up. 2 subtract to negative 1 would be the same as 2 plus 1. So that's y cubed. So that's going there.
I need the extra practice. Okay. All right. So y cubed, x squared in the denominator. Your homework, 47 through 66, all of these. Okay. Again, you just get better. The more and more you see, the more and more you do, the better you'll get.